guess who did absolutely nothing all day and is now only starting to work at 8.40 p.m. Oh, why do I do this to myself? Good morning, vlog. Hope you guys have been well. You guys had a great night. I slept well. Can't complain. It's about 10 a.m. Saturday morning. I, I've been working for the past three hours, so let me just show you on, on my phone. Spent about three hours or so editing and cutting up footage from yesterday's vlog. Yesterday's vlog is a little research heavy, so I'm not really expecting not really expecting the video to be too well received, but it is uh, something that's important for me and something that helps me learn, something that helps me improve my algorithms. Today, what we're going to be doing, hopefully, is we're going to be starting off with the recurrent neural network. So again, it's going to be more of a research heavy blog today and tomorrow as I learn more about RNNs, learn how to implement them. More importantly, learn how to code them from scratch so I can implement them in my, in my Lua game. So that's the plan for today. Now, before we get into that, though, I'm excited because last night I started an interesting experiment. Last night I ran two different training or I, I started two different AI trainings. One where the Epsilon is just 0.2 and both agents, they just have a 20% chance of making random moves. The other one is one where the AI, the player number one has a 20% chance of Epsilon, so Epsilon 0.2, 20% chance of making a random move. But then player number two, it always plays optimally. So Epsilon of zero always plays optimally, always finds the best moves. And that wasn't an attempt to just change up the way I do some training. I also lowered the learning rate from like 0.001 to 0.001, which just means that it trains a little slower and, and hopefully gets to uh, uh, a better optimal solution. And just really quickly, I'll dissect this in more detail later on today because I also have to go shopping. So, But I mean, just really quickly, if you take a look here, it's still going. This has trained almost 3 million epochs now, so 3 million training instances. What I'm really interested in and one thing that's slightly disappointed in is so you know because player two so this is player two here player two plays optimally we can see that's won about four hundred thousand games and then player one that plays with it with a twenty percent chance of making random moves has only won about one hundred forty seven thousand games now at the beginning of training that makes a lot of sense because at the beginning of training it's still playing around it's still learning still learning optimal moves and things like that one thing I am disappointed in, though, is right now, so it's tra it's trained and it's played about almost, you know, 3 million games or whatever. And even though player two plays optimally and always plays the best moves, it still sometimes loses to player one. So I'm very curious as to why. Don't know how to don't know how to solve that. I may come back to it later on, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it today. I spent way too much time on this already. So, but that is, that is just something I may want to improve sometime in the future because it's still, it's still losing, even though it should always be playing optimally. So that's that. And then down here, what we have is we have, well, this one still needs to do some more training because it's only about 1 million epochs. And I might stop it, to be honest, that 1 million, 1 million, 2 million, eh, it doesn't really, I don't really think it'll, it'll make that big of a difference. But I, and I, I don't have any conclusions for it yet because it's just doing its thing. I don't, the, the, the win and loss numbers that I'm getting here, they don't really tell me much. And the error rate that I'm getting here again doesn't really tell me much but yeah i mean i'm just gonna kick back sit back and relax i've already worked for three hours this morning so let's do some relaxation before i gotta get up do some cleaning do some grocery do some laundry and later today i will start researching rnns okay so social updates are done where's my phone social updates are done yesterday's vlog will be going out and a whole bunch of other micro content from yesterday's vlog will be going out uh, I'm still waiting for to show you. I'm still waiting for this guy to finish up. He's only still like 900,000 epochs left to go. Um, so in the meantime, I'm gonna go shopping, do some laundry, do some cleanup, and hopefully by then, in, within like a few hours or so, this should be done. And I'll just compare it to the. I should probably pause this one. I'll compare it to the other. The other bot that I'm training, just pause that because this one's almost at 3 million epochs. So 
Ah, uh, who cares? Yeah, I don't really care. And so once that's done, I will just experiment, have one go up against Naive, have the other one go up against Naive, just see which one performs better, just out of curiosity. And then that will be done. That will be that for DQN. And then I'll move on to RNN. So today's going to be a long day of just research and learning and, 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 and reading. Guess who did absolutely nothing all day and is now only starting to work at 8.40 p.m.? Oh, why do I do this to myself? Okay, so I still have a bunch of research to do, and that's the sad part. I still have a bunch of research to do, and it's 8.40. I still have to make this video. I still have to edit it. And funnily enough, this is still... Let me show you what's going on. This honestly was the reason why I haven't done anything today, because, because this thing is still training. I'm still... I still haven't hit two, 2 million epochs yet. So it's still going. I'm still just waiting for it to, to be done. And that's kind of just why I got derailed and just sat down and just watched YouTube all day. But you know what? Let me just do some research, get, start getting an understanding for, for what RNNs are. Um, so recurrent neural networks and we'll go from there. So my, my, my basic understanding before going into this is that recurrent neural networks are just neural networks that take time into consideration. And so essentially what they do is they use inputs that you fed, that you fed them at a previous time state um, and they, they keep that in memory. And so you know, in, in, in state one, you have your input, it gets processed, and then it produces an output. And then in time step two, that output then comes back and it, and it feeds it, it back into the network along with the new inputs, processes it again, and then it produces an output. And so that is what a recur that's what a vanilla recurrent neural network is. Uh, eventually, what I'm trying to get to is something called the long, long short term memory. I think that's what it's called, LSTM. And essentially, what an LSTM is is that it it it, it does it essentially it just adds better memory management, and so the neural network is able to learn what it should remember throughout the different time steps and what it should just forget. And so that's eventually what I'm going for. The so first step: learning how to build, learning what an RNN is and how it works, and then learning how to build it from scratch. I'm gonna go ahead and say this: I don't think. Now that I have like a like a neural network library, I really, really, really don't think this should take me too long to to like understand and build from scratch. But I said that before. I said that for this project back in November 2020. We're September 2021. So so one thing one thing I might do is again just for experimenting, I might just pull up my old Excel sheet where I built my original neural networks and just add RNNs to that sheet. Maybe just do like very simple sentiment classification type of, yeah, maybe just build like a sentiment classification problem and just have the network, the RNN just, you know, classify different texts. So throw one text example and just have it classify whether or not, after you break down all the words, classify whether or not that's a, that's a, that's a positive sentiment or a positive sentence versus a negative sentence. So, you know what would be really cool? What would be really cool is with RNN, is there too much light on my face? It might be. But actually, you know what? Yeah, let me turn off. Which one should I turn off? Turn off one of them. Maybe this one. Nah, it's weirder. Nah, who cares? As I was saying, what I think would be really cool is... Actually, you know what? Let me leave this off. Let me turn this one off. Ugh. See, this is what I do all day and eventually get no work done. What would be really cool is if you used a recurrent neural network to make a handman game. I think that would be really fun. Um, and so essentially, you it's just like hangman, right? So you come up with a word and you just play hangman against the computer and the computer has to guess what word, what word's in your mind. Or something like... Is it the price is right? The price is right. Where they have like a game board and you have to guess the words or the sentences on the game board. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, something like that. So it's like you play you're you're playing Wheel of Fortune against against the AI. I think that'd be that'd be a lot of fun. This is why I get nothing done. I'm now researching and just looking up memes for Wheel of Fortune. But what would be really cool about Wheel of Fortune, I'm still on Wheel of Fortune. I <laughs> what'd be really cool about Wheel of Fortune is if you actually made it like a like a like a sort of a game show where it's you versus the AI, right? And so it's, it, I, I think that'd be really cool. I have to I have to watch some real Wheel of Fortune. 
footage just to get a better understanding of how the game goes. But I think that's how the game goes, right? I think it's like each contestant is kind of playing individually and they're all just trying to guess the phrase or the, yeah, the words that are on the screen. Um, yeah, it'd be really cool. Who knows? I'm still trying to complete this 3D tic-tac-toe game and I already, I'm just coming up with ideas to make other games. This is... Okay, it's enough time spent, about like five minutes wasted there on Wheel of Fortune. Let's go back to... Let's go back to learning. It's already like 9.42. I still have to edit this vlog, but my DQN is done training. It's gone through 2 million epochs. So what I'll actually do is I'll end the RNN portion of the vlog here and I'll get right into taking a look at my DQNs and comparing the two of them, just trying to see, you know, the results of my experiment, see how it goes. Tomorrow I'll pick back up on the RNN part portion of it and I'll actually implement it in Excel, see how that goes. And then from there, hopefully next week, I'll start translating my Excel model into actual code. So, oh, I'm really, really tired today. <sighs> okay, this light's producing too much heat. Turn it off. Okay, so it took, took almost 24 hours for this computer to hit 2 million epochs. This one's this one's been at, you know, I paused it I think earlier in this afternoon, morning-ish, and it's already hit 3 mil. So this, uh, I'm gonna call this test A, I'm gonna call this test B. So test A has trained about a million more times than test B has, but I don't think that that would be too I, I, I'm hoping that doesn't play too big of a factor in how they both perform. So what I'll do now is I will set up an experiment where this test A AI goes up against naive AI and I'll put pit the two of them together, see how it performs, and then I'll do it for the same for test B. And so just a quick recap, this one was trained with player one being the player that has an epsilon of 0 0.2 so has a 20 percent chance of making random moves whereas player two which is the player here that's won most that's won you know 500,000 games it only plays optimally so whatever player one has learned player two or all the moves that player one has learned player two takes a look at them and sees which are the best moves that will always guarantee a win or at the very least a draw and that's that's the only moves it implements and so that I kind of did that because I wanted to see the AI learn moves, but I also wanted to see how it would overcome those optimal moves as well. And then test B here is just, just straight up, you know, epsilon of 20 for both of them. So both of them play optimally and both of them um, will make random moves 20% of the time. So let's start the experiments. Okay, so one thing I just, I'm implementing really quickly right now is I want both games, or so, so you know, what were they called? I'm really tired. I forgot what I what I decided to call them. Was it test A and test B? I want both test A and test B to only go up against naive a thousand times, or maybe even a hundred times. Yeah, maybe a hundred times. Actually, no. Let's do a thousand. Let's stick with a thousand. A thousand times, and then and and only play a thousand games, and then I will tabulate and go through the results afterwards. So I'm just quickly building a function or just a line here that just says, you know, if you've played a thousand games, just pause or just stop, and that's that. Okay, and here we are off to the races. We are, this is test A. I don't know if I called it, I don't know. Test A, whatever. I just know it's the first one, A. This one is currently just going up against I right now. It does not look good. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, uh, I don't know what that was going on, but it's not looking good so far. We're about halfway through and Naive has beaten it more times than it has beaten Naive, so. I'm not happy about that. Okay, so the results for test A are in, and it is grossly, grossly underwhelming. So out of a thousand games that won three, 319, Naive beat it 470 times, and there are 210 draws. So that experiment did not work as well as I had hoped. But now I'm actually really worried about test B, how bad test B will be. But let's load up test B and let's see, see what that's like. 
test speeds off to the races. And I mean, it's beating Naive more often than it's losing to Naive, but it's still losing to Naive a lot. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to improve the performance. To be very honest, I'm quite disappointed. And we're already about halfway through, so don't think it's going to get any better. Okay, look, to be very honest, man, both of these were just huge disappointments. Um, I mean, look, this is lost against Naive 269 times. I, I, I think that's insane for a neural network to be beaten by if statements almost almost a third of the time. I think that's ridiculous. But these are the results. Uh, again, I am moving on from DQN, so I'm not really too, too worried about it. I think what I need to do is learn a little bit more about how to tweak my hyperparameters to just squeeze out that little bit of performance from, or every ounce of performance I can from DQN. But this is, this is a huge disappointment. So if we compare them side by side, this is test A, this is test B. They're, again, I, I, I personally think they're both huge disappointments. They won, their win rate is about the same. So this one 319, this one 327, about the same. But for me, this one lost to Naive about, um, sorry, test B lost to Naive about half the amount of times that test A lost against Naive. Uh, so that's that's the only, that's the only improvement I would say that test B had over test A. So the idea of, I guess, you know, I, I learned something new. The idea for in DQ1, the idea of having one network be the one that does all the learning and then the second one be the one that just plays optimally. Either I didn't implement it correctly or it just doesn't really work out as well as, as well as you'd hope. So keep in mind also that they played about 2 million epochs, which for one person worked well. For me, it may have just been, they may have just overfitted. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm done with DQN. I, I'm moving on to something else. So I'm not going to give it. I'm not going to give it much more thought. It was... No, no, I'm upset. No, I'm upset. I'm trying to figure out why this isn't training as well as I'd hoped, but... Oh, well, whatever. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to call it a night there. I'm still upset at the training results. Yeah, no, still, still quite upset. You know what? Who cares? Um, I'll call it, I'll, I'll call it a night. 10, 10 p.m. Maybe work on editing this video for about an hour or two and uh, bright and early tomorrow morning, I uh, will get back to RNNs and start trying to implement them. I think I have a solid grasp, grasp for them. The only thing that's confusing me right now is how to implement back propagation for recurrent neural networks because it's a little different than just normal back prop for normal neural networks because there's time involved and there's a different output at different times for the network, which gets it which makes it very confusing so yeah tomorrow is going to be a very interesting day honestly i just don't have the brain power right now to be able to digest and go through the math for this so um hopefully tomorrow morning when i get up i'm fresh i'll be able to go through it so see you then